hello it's Sarah and I've decided to create a little um, journal cover a little teeny tiny journal cover um, I've been doing this uh, metal embossing and with pewter specifically uh, but I've mo been mostly inspired by a specific metal embossing artist her name is Alicia Hart and I'll put the the um, in the description box I'll put a link to her web page um, and I did just order one of her um, her designs, one of her kits that comes with everything. And so um, I'm looking forward to that. But in the meantime, I, I have cut a little piece of pewter that will fit right on top of this journal cover. Just like that. And I'm going to emboss it by hand with some tools. So I just created this little design here. This is just the beginnings of it. And it's basically something that uh, Alicia does in all of her beginner, well, I don't know if it's a beginner class per se, but um, it's a class that she does to do kind of like a, um, a sampler, right? Of all the different techniques that you can do on pewter. And she creates a journal cover. So anywho. I am going to attempt to get some lines on here. So in that vein, I have created this little design to go on this little tiny journal cover. And I'm just going to attempt to put some lines in here. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna line this up so that it's perfectly straight. And that way, maybe I'll have a better, well, not that it's perfectly straight, but it's about where I want it. Um, and these lines are just, I could do a quarter or I could do, they're just over a quarter. Do I want to do a quarter? I think I'm going to do a quarter. A quarter inch is what I mean. I'm going to go right over the line and just make a scratch mark down. And I think I don't know if you can see that, but you can see it on the front too. And I'm going to take it and go down the other side and do the same thing. And try to make it a little wider than a quarter inch on that side too. And I'm working on the back of the pewter and I've put a line on there to, to tell me because Evidently, the um, when you patina the metal, it takes the patina better on the front. There's a front and a back to the specific pewter. So I'm just seeing if I actually did a measurement like it's, uh, let's see. Hmm. Three quarters? Could be. I think I'm going to do three quarters. So anyway, this is the beginning. You just kind of etch or trace your design onto the piece. Um, see, this is specific because I did that. The heart is a specific uh, size. This I can definitely do on the line here. Yeah, I'm going to do it right here. I can always alter the, and I'm going all the way from edge to edge because I'm going to make little designs. And also, um, Alicia calls it metangle, metangling, because you can just do zentangling on here for your design. So that's kind of what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to make this at just over this line. Right about here. And that kind of gives me a jumping off point. Um, I should probably put my heart on so that I know um, how fat to make the lines. Yeah, I think I am. I think I'm going to put my heart on the front. And that way... It's a little chubbier on one side, but you know what? That makes it hand-drawn, right? 
and I like to pull towards me because it just helps me when I'm going away from myself I tend to make a wonky line um, so I'm just kind of scratching this into the pewter good I have a heart all right and then I should have a little mark there all right so I am going to start with this I want to make See, this might actually touch. I might have made that too close. All right, I'm going to bring in my, this is a masonite board. This is going to be my hard surface. And then I have five sheets of paper that are kind of getting to be a mess right now. And then I have a piece of soft, this is my soft, and it's starting to get beat up too. A piece of craft foam, like a kid's craft foam. I'm going to take this on the back and first I think I'm going to just make my lines uh, I want to make the deep lines so to set up the whole design I'm going to zoom back out a little and I'm going to grab my ruler because I do want this to be straight but I'm on my soft surface and I'm going to put some even pressure with my Teflon tipped tool and press into the metal and I'm going to do the other side too so I'll do two sides at once I guess and this one I can see the line so make a even pressure and then I'm going to move these and get onto my hard surface and I didn't take this one all the way down I just want to make that all the way down okay I'm going to go onto my hard surface and have a blending stump kind of push down the metal around the line and then we're going to reinforce it with the Teflon tool again the Teflon tip and basically just push kind of push down and up against the line as you go and I'm a beginner at this but it's pretty simple it's not like it's hard um, I'm sure there's tricks you know or kind of as you get the hang of it you kind of will figure things out a little better but that that's kind of all I wanted was to get a little bit of a raised line there. I'm going to do that again down these other two lines. So I'm just going to take my, and I'm on the soft surface again. And I'm going to go to the top of the line because I don't want to touch my heart. I'm going to try and take it a little bit away from my heart this time. Yeah, that worked good. And I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom line. I'm just going to go to the right side of the line to make sure that I'm not gonna go over the heart and just make another one and take this away now and kind of press down the metal around that so that I don't cave it back in on itself and it stays raised and then take your Teflon tip tool and go whoops wait this way up against and press down and kind of up against it and down that's what I'm doing so far but I may be wrong and I'm a very heavy hand too so but I believe that's what you do kind of get it to pop up and raise that line and I I'm glad I moved it up because I did not want it to touch the heart I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the heart if I'm going to pop it up a little bit. I think I'm going to put a design in it. Um, so that's that for right now. And you can always push down the metal around your lines. I'm going to put, the, I want to put the words on here. Um, I do think I want them to pop up too. Hmm, yeah, I think I do. So Inspire is going to fit in the middle of there. I think that's good. 
and then create I'll center here so I'm gonna get a few more details etched on and then I'll be right back okay I've got my words on I'm gonna go from the back this time and well again and we're going to make the words pop out just like we did those lines so I'm gonna I'll zoom in a little and I'll try to get right over it so you can see what I'm doing but with medium pressure I guess because I'm a heavy hand just press down and try to be straight that's what I'm trying to do although it's a hand see that's not straight I already mucked it up well so I'm gonna go connect that there to there make my S and maybe I'll stop I don't know if you're supposed to do one at a time see that's the thing about like I'm still a beginner so I'm not sure if um, if I'm actually even doing it the proper the total proper way uh, but it's been working so I mean you know it's not totally wrong and I'm just using my um, paper stump to flatten the metal around what I've done and I can't find I have another one that's a little more um, broken in um, but then I take the Teflon tip tool and just like I did on these lines gently press and push towards the line I just made and it reinforces and makes that more distinct and pop up and that's why when you're creating your word make sure you don't put your letters too close together if you're planning on doing this dimensional lettering because then you'll have a better chance that there's enough room and it won't look um, it'll look right so that looks pretty good let's try the S tell you this pewter is so nice to work with it's soft it's so soft and yeah it's really good so that looks good very happy with that so that's basically that I'm just gonna make some designs on the um, right here I'm gonna do like I, I did a little sketch so I just have some ideas of what I want to do. Um, I think I am going to do, I think I'm going to do the leaf, the vine on both sides of the heart and then I'll put the triangles in a different section. But I'm going to go from the front this time instead of from the back and just gently even pressure down to the bottom and the same on this side. And I'll put a little leaf design on there. My husband's outside doing um, some lighting adjustments out there. And my dog sees them probably and she wants them. Sorry, I don't even know if you can hear her. But I just flattened that out a little bit. And I'm going to add a little leaf design. It's just like zentangling. And Alicia likes to call it metangling, tangling on metal. And when I use the patina, which I've just used black acrylic paint so far, because um, I haven't gotten the um, <clears throat> the chemical one yet. There is a chemical one that supposedly is really good for um, getting it to, to just patina the right color and everything but that looks pretty I like that um, but I'm just gonna start you know with the bit the bare minimum first for now and I like the way the paint works I use the, the paint just black acrylic paint and it goes into all the nooks and crannies just the way um, I think that's how she does it. I think she's done it like that a lot of times um, on 
her videos that I've seen so far, it shows that technique. And I'm just pushing the metal down. So that looks cool so far. All right, I'm going to go away and finish my words. I'm going to do create the same exact way as I've done the um, Inspire. Kind of. All right, I'll be back. Okay, I'm really liking my lettering. I think it's turning out pretty good. Very like um, clear, you know, just you can tell what it says. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to do some, some detail on the heart. And I think I'm going to do this swirl. I think so. So again, I'm going to go from the back. And let me see if I have, do I have that on the tracing? I don't. Because I think I want to put it on this side anyway. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if you can see this. Actually, I want it to come. So, that's pretty much what I'm going to do. Um, and I think I am going to do it from the front first because I don't want to flatten anything out by pushing. See, this is where the beginner side of me isn't sure of a lot of things, like when it's best to do what. So I just am kind of trying to think about it and do it, you know, what I think would work out best. So I'm just going to basically scratch a line on here. And this is from the front, but I want to make it, I want to make that pop out. So I want to make the whole heart pop out. So that means you go on your soft surface with your Teflon tip tool. And I think I'm going to start, I'm probably going to be spinning this all around, but I'm going to start in the center and try to go evenly like that. Or you know what, I'm going to start right here. I'm going to start at the bottom. And I'm going to stay to the inside of this line so that I don't like bump into everything. And if I'm not in the shot, it's because I'm trying to see what I'm doing. And not uh, push too hard and get myself... See, I just wanted to go right past that line. Um, trying to make it even like distance from the other from the line itself I guess I'll continue and finish the uh, heart shape so I'll just put this down stay to the inside of that line Hopefully, oh, see that? I didn't do that round. That's because I took my eye off the ball. I looked up at the camera to see if I was in the shot, and I... There are eraser tools, so anyway, so it's a little wonky on that side. Maybe I can straighten it out. I know there's eraser tools and all types of stuff that you can use to fix it when you do that. Um, so that's my heart shape. That's pretty cool. And I'm just pressing down the metal around the line to get it a little flatter because I really poofed it out. And then I'll take my, um, my paper stump and push down even more, get it closer to the uh, the walls of that indention type thing. I don't know if you know what I mean. But I'm just pushing down on the inside now too. Before I come in and uh, use the Teflon tip tool. And that way, when I use the Teflon tip tool, it's kind of closer to <clears throat> where I want it to be. And I'm on the hard surface. I think I'm going to start on the inside. And giving... Even pressure. Kirby, stop. 
even pressure, pushing toward the line and down now at the same time. Because you don't want to cross over that. Like you have to stay beside the line. You don't want to go on top of it. This is good. This is working out. So far, so good. It really makes those lines defined when you do this. My Okay. Kirby, come. Yeah, she'll listen. All right, now I'm going to go right here. Sorry about that. My husband's out there. I don't know if somebody else stopped by. I'll be back. So like here where it looks a little bit like I went out of lines, so you can take your paper stump and kind of press and flatten that all out. But I think, I don't think I did that part yet. Oopsie. Um, I'm going to take and go back through again, like I'm going to try and do it one more time over the same uh, line on the soft um, foam and see if I can get it like rounder or deeper, but it looks pretty good. I mean, it's definitely, it's pretty good. I don't need to be such a stickler. I was definitely far enough away from here that I got a nice, like there's not, it's not touching. And here it's not touching. So I'm pretty happy with it. Like right there, I think I just want to make it a little bit wider at the top of this. So let me try and not screw the whole thing up. If I go back in there, see, and I don't even know if this is allowed, like if you're, if you should do this or not, but I mean, I, I guess trial and error is one of the best ways to find things out, right? I think that's pretty good. So I was just trying to get this a little rounder. Let's see if I can do it. Yes, I think I did. Yep. Or not rounder, but filled in. Like I filled in that line. This is a little thin here, but I think I'm going to stop. No, I can't. I got to try and make this a little wider right here and I'm trying to keep my tool perpendicular too so that I make sure it goes it creates the right shape I'll take my paper stump and go right next to the line and then take the Teflon tip I think I did it I think it's definitely more consistent shaped it looks rounder okay yes I'm talking to myself too a bit because I'm figuring it out as I go but I definitely think I rounded that made it the same I don't know if you can tell but it is the same width on that side now okay so <clears throat> What else do I want to do? Um, definitely want to do like some flowery things and some dots. These are the coolest things too. I think I'm going to fill probably both these sides but you take this cup and ball tool and there are a couple different sizes of these 
this doesn't have a size on it but there's a ball on one end and a cup on the other and you make little like let's see I think I'll put three maybe four one two three I think I'm gonna try four hmm let's do it on this side first and you basically one two they look bigger or they look like they're taking up more room on this side but when you cup it it totally gets small again so it's not it's a little deceiving when you're making them but they absolutely even out and that's four on both of that go back to the flat part push down and take the cup edge and just cup it on top and then you, it reinforces the little circle and it kind of fits right in there nicely so those are simple to do and I would I'm very I would love to make bigger ones and little ones inside of big ones or just really play with that because I do love circles so that looks really cool I like that and I might be adding those over here too I think I will because it just looks um, conform is that the, oh you know what I mean conform I'm gonna do them but uh, just to make sure because I did round the ends of the I really just want to make sure I'll start on this side one two three four One, two, three. And I saw Alicia do this. This is the she has this is one of the videos she has on her uh, YouTube channel where she just goes over a few of the different techniques you can do. She does a, she does love, she puffs out a heart, and she uses this cup and ball tool. Um she does use that other little tool that I have that I um, don't use very often. It's like a roller. But look at those dots. This is turning out super cute. Um, so see, this is the little journal. And I just painted the edges with my uh, Posca paint pen. And I'm going to glue that down in a little bit. Alright, but I can't, I got to add more. So on my drawing, I actually put a little scallop on the inside of the heart there, which I kind of like that. I might stick with that. And then I put flowers here, which I'm not positive about. Um, so I'm going to go away and play and come back with the next step. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm finished. I've added lots of texture. I put little stri like stripes on the bottom. I didn't do anything for Inspire. I put swirls and all types of stuff that you'll see better when I put the patina on here. And that's the um, the black paint I keep talking about. But for now, I'm going to prep the back surface um, with, and this is just American Crafts. I ordered, um, I think it's one and a half inch, uh, the Sook Wang tape on Amazon, and it didn't come. Um, it set out for delivery, but then it never, it didn't get here. And Amazon's great because I, I just texted them and said that, um, you know, it said out for delivery, but I never got it, and they are sending me more. So that's awesome. Uh, but this is a great way to get your, um, I'm going to just go all across, go, um, I'm not going to fill the background of this, which I could probably do, and it will get handled a lot, and that probably is like the best one you really should fill your raised areas with either, um, modeling paste or something that would is going to hold the shape for you um, but I'm waiting right now for a, a piece to dry 
that I filled and it just takes too long. I'm too impatient. And that's why uh, Alicia Hart uses beeswax. And I'm going to look into it. I'm going to see if it's worthwhile for me to get some. I've never worked with it before. Um, I'm just going to take my paper stump and go around all the flat surfaces and just give some pressure so that my tape is definitely stuck on there. Um, even though I've embossed the flat areas, uh, I did it from the front back and I just, I've been doing this and it doesn't seem to affect the, uh, finished result like when you when I um, add the paint to it it still gets in all those nooks and crannies so it's okay I put little circles inside here and I don't know if they'll show up but I just want to make sure the tape is adhered as best as it can so that I because I'm putting it on a little notebook that's going to get handled quite a bit um, that I can hopefully have the best adhesion possible and I'm just cutting the uh, excess right at the edges and I said I rounded the edge of the corners I should say with my oh no felt like I, I did I cut the metal a little bit oopsie shit <laughs> oh man it was nice and straight yes because that's because I'm being hasty and uh, anyway so the next thing we're going to do is, sorry, I have sticky tape on my hand. I'm going to take some black. See, that bothers me because it was so nice and straight. I have to fix it. Good. Um, black paint, just plain old black acrylic paint. And I'm going to brush it on. And then you take it off with a paper towel. So I'm just going to use a flat brush. And I don't have water. Um, I have this real quick. I just want to wet it a little bit. Wet my brush at least. Just so it's not straight. Um, I have a paper towel here. So that it's not straight paint. What was I going to grab? Um, another paper towel. I guess I'm going to lay it on a paper towel and I'm loading up my brush and I'm just going to go over the whole entire surface with this black paint. And this is why my nails look so lovely lately because I just have black paint all over me. And I, I'm kind of being rough with it because I want it to get down in any embossed or debossed lines and that way when I wipe it away you'll see those lines that's the idea and I'm just gonna take get it different just let it sit on there for a sec and then I'm gonna just using a, a regular paper towel, not wet or anything. Just start wiping it away. I turn it the opposite way. And then I'm going to go this way. And then this way. And now you can start to see all that detail. And I'll let that dry a little bit more and then I'm going to buff it with a towel. And that'll take out the last like darkest paint areas. Cool. 
see how you can see it? All the details. So I think, you know what we'll do while we're waiting for that to dry? If I can find my, uh, here. Hopefully get it on here pretty straight. Now that I totally screwed up the, I still want to straighten that out. Let me see if I can. Hey babe, I'm filming. See, that stinks. I'm just going to take my ruler and try and uh, get a very straight line. I don't even know if I'm in the shot, but yeah, that just bothers me. That's a, a little mistake. I think it'll be fine. I'm going to take my corner chomper and make it look uh, <clears throat> see I don't even know if alright let's peel off this tape backing and then the last final step that I've not done yet to any of my uh, pieces, even my my like Santa Claus ornament, which is sitting here somewhere, I gotta put, I gotta find a piece of uh, red ribbon. Sorry, I'm having trouble without bending the metal too much to grab. This is pretty sticky too, the American Crafts, but I know the um, the Sook Wang brand is such a good um, double-sided tape. Um, so I'm looking forward, oopsie. So this is my last, yeah, this is very sticky. Getting my fingers all over it. All right. So now I might come out of the shot for a sec because I want to line this up. Oh, you okay. it's all over my fingers. Make sure I have it where I want it. I cut it so that it's um, got about an eighth of an inch all the way around. And then I'm going to take this dirty old rag that I have and just rub it and try to bring up the polish of that pewter and at the same time get it stuck down real well and remove any paint that I don't want on there I think we're gonna I'm gonna do a little bit of coloring too just a little that looks good I like it and it seems pretty stuck down. You can't really tell it's crooked too bad. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to take my Sharpies. I have them right on my desk. Now you can use any alcohol marker. They all will work. Uh, I'm going to use a little green. And I have this pretty green. This is like a lime green. Because I have all these little... Um, Push that out of the way because it's. I don't want that to fall. Um, just touch it to all these little leaves. <laughs> and it. Just adds a little bit of color. Um, I think I'm going to put, I can't really see that green too much. I got to make my heart pink. Should we go pink or red? 
I'm a little not sure if I got enough paint. I'm just taking a Q-tip and just getting a little of that paint off the surface. Yeah, I think I had a little... I don't want the paint all over. Just in the nooks and crannies, so I'm kind of helping it off a little bit. That's better. Maybe a wet a wet paper towel is a better um, idea. I don't want to use um, probably all. Yeah, that's better. I'm I'm definitely. I think a damp, not wet, but a damp paper towel is probably better than um, a dry one because that is much better. Like I don't want to leave that paint residue all over everything. I want it to be just in the nooks and crannies and up against, yes, that is much better. I wonder if it shows the big difference that I see. Um, yeah, definitely. You don't want to just have paint and then it, it shows the luster better of the metal. Oh boy, Inspire is a mess. Um, gonna get another Q-tip. Because you definitely want the paint to show the details, but not to dull down all the beautiful um, patine or pewter, the pewter. Okay, now I'm gonna buff it with the paint with the uh, rag. I think that's a big difference. I think I definitely see a difference in the in the um, way it's shining. All right, so I think I'm going to use pink on, is this pink? Yeah. Because I'm a pink girl, I definitely like pink. I'm going around the raised line. I mean, you could color it wherever you want. Just trying to hit it. I think I'm gonna go around the. This is kind of like my little attempt at like a scallopy um, eyelet lace or something, because I did put little circles inside of that. So that's cool. That is hay, and I got some of the pink off. And I'll put where I'm going to definitely put color because I like color, but I like it. All right, you guys. So that's it. My little notebook has a little pewter cover now. Maybe I'll put one on the back. All right, thanks for watching.